Alfred Bloomingdale was a visionary businessman and was one of the principal founders of the Diners Club credit card, which was the first independent credit card in the world. Credit was never ever heard of really in Europe. And my husband, he had a difficult time, but a man called Jacques Bruet was the head of Dior at the time. And he understood credit and he realized what my husband was doing. So my husband said, you buy your clothes at Dior. And that's how I really started in the couture. Mark Bowen was the designer at the time. Everything that he did was so, for me, it was, for me, it was, it fit beautifully, it was pretty. Il y a des gens que j'aimais beaucoup habiller. Quand on fait une collection, on y pense. À ces clientes-là, ou à ces amis-là, on se dit, tiens, ça lui irait bien, tiens, elle serait capable d'aimer. Oh, ça, elle ne mettrait jamais ça, c'est pas la peine. Il faut essayer un peu de... Ma, 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 ma politique, ça a toujours été de penser comme ça, dans le cadre de ce que je faisais. Et jamais me dire, ça va être dans la presse, ça va être... C'est ce que Piguet m'avait appris dès le début. Vous faites plaisir aux clientes et pas à la couverture de Vogue. Et c'est comme ça que vous pouvez travailler. To work with Mark was really very special. He was a wonderful man and I was very fond of him. And the same thing at Givenchy. Hubert would come in and say, well, yes, I think that's very good, or you need it longer, or you need it shorter. Well, he was just a very special man. J'étais forcément très, très fier qu'elle porte mes couleurs et qu'elle les porte aussi bien. Mais, mais voilà, ça a été, je dirais, une preuve d'amitié. Et, et que mes vêtements soient portés par Madame Lomindel, c'était une fierté, bien sûr, parce que Elle les portait d'une façon avec une élégance et un chic tout à fait particulier. Jean-Franco Ferré took over as creative director for Christian Dior. And you can see a transition from Marc Bowen's clothes really being real clothing into Jean-Franco Ferré's designs, which are more theatrical. Those clothes were not mine, Jean-Franco Ferré. Beautiful fabrics, but I felt that those clothes wore me. I didn't wear them. Saint Laurent, I never really knew. I had met him and, and had lunch with him or something, but I never knew him, because he was, a, a, maybe he was more uh, a part. He, was kind of, a, he's more a quiet man, I, you know. He had a health problem, says, but he was a genius, absolutely so. But I do remember Courage. I arrived at the Plaza Atene Hotel, and a woman walked kind of around the door. She had on the best looking thing I'd ever seen, and I stood in the lobby where I was just checking in, and she had this kind of wonderful thing that looked like I don't know, like a V-shaped. And I had to find out, and she said, oh, it was Courage. And I had never seen Courage. And a lovely lady called Drida Maley, she's still a very close friend of mine in Paris, and she was the directrice there. And she said, Betsy, you must have this and that and the other thing. So that's what we did, and I loved Courage at the time. Adolfo, well, he's just such a, sweet darling man and still is and he was always so helpful and he could, did my daughter's wedding and uh his adolfo originally i think was known for hats i did want to do something in fashion so i started to make hats ladies hats but i didn't really like to do that i did like to make women's clothes so little by little i was able to uh to to get into to start to make clothes, which I have, I learned to do them in Paris. I met Mrs. Blumendel in the early, in the late 60s, and we became friends right away. And Mrs. Blumendel, I remember like today, she bought a wide organdy skirt and a top, and she told she took it to Beverly Hills and she wore it. And 
a couple of weeks after that, and this is true, a lady called me and she said, oh, you know, I saw Mrs. Bloomingdale with that. Can I order one? And another lady called me, and another lady called me. And uh, that's, then I became a, a very well-known in Beverly Hills, thanks to Mrs. Bloomingdale. He had the most love, well, it was on 57th Street, I remember so well, and I never could wait to quite get up there. He was just, because everything he had was like, you know, candy, you know, and I was that, that, that. And of course he was, well, he was just a very special man. I was very sorry when he retired. They've all retired on me, that's the thing. Galanos always had the most beautiful clothes and he, to me, was like French clothes. I mean, you could turn, it's a famous thing, you can turn his clothes inside out and they're beautifully on the inside, beautiful on the outside. Amelia Gray, I think, was the first person to have Jimmy. Uh, and that's where I, I met him. I got to know uh, uh, Mr. Bloomingdale because uh, of Amelia, and um, and I, I was very pleased because I knew her reputation. I'd seen her and how elegant she looked and how well she dressed, and you know, Amelia had them all. She, they would come to her too because she she could cater to them in a very very private and special way, and they loved coming to her. And they they could get things where they couldn't get it anywhere else. I mean, she had most wonderful ladies, so they, were all, they all had great figures and they were very prominent, and uh, that started it. I didn't know anything about uh, making clothes or what have you until I you know, started to get into it. And uh, when I started, I started at the top. Uh, even at our price range, I made the clothes look like they were expensive. I was adamant about the quality and about the workmanship. And that's what the, what the, the buyers saw and the press saw. They turned their, their clothes inside out and they were amazed. Oh, you looked at these beautiful clothes and the fabrics and the way they were made. Jimmy was the one who could get the beautiful fabrics. He used to go abroad, buy the fabrics. And he really was, I think, the, the great, great designer. I think of my grandmother and her couture, I think of Red Valentino. Well, I was going to say the same, but I think we probably all have different a different dress in our heads. Different I'm thinking reds. of, but yeah. probably a Red Valentino, <laughs> yeah. but a different one. Yeah, which is typical of her. She mm -hmm. loves the Valentino reds. Valentino came into my life then, and he had, of course, wonderful couture, but his ready-to-wear was so beautiful and it pleased me so much that uh, I didn't really have anybody left in Paris that I was desperate to, <laughs> to have the clothes of because Valentino made the fill. And then also I had the Los Angeles things like Galanos and, and Oscar de la Renta has beautiful clothes. Ralph Lauren and Carolina Herrera are my favorites today. It's a long time it was my pleasure, desire to work with, with Mr. Oscar de la Renta. Mm -hmm. And this man, I love him so much. He's very chic, he's very talent. And for me, I think there is not more after Oscar de la Renta. What I have always done is extremely very feminine clothes. So perhaps today, my business, I know, is far stronger than it has ever been. We like to associate a sense of luxury with money, but it's, it, it's not money, because you can be fabulously well-dressed on a little gray skirt and a little gray sweater. You know, it's the discipline of how you put it together and how you do it. And this is the kind of woman that Bessie is. You know, she has always been that way. My grandmother um, loves to now kind of hear about what kind of designers that we're into. And Tom Ford, I remember her telling me, um, I met someone named Tom Ford the other night. And the next day he sent her the exact skirt she had been talking about. Mm -hmm. And she said, now I have this skirt that Tom Ford did that's right. just wonderful. So I she's always that. keeping up. John Galliano, who's now the big star at Christian Dior, 
I met when he was at Givenchy before he went to Dior. And I said, oh, this is wonderful. And then I looked down and he was barefoot with the brightest red toenails and one was purple and one was red. Some other. So I thought, oh my God, this is the designer of this. But anyway, he was. And then he was, and he's been the designer and very successful at Dior. The things that he puts on the runway are really runway sh things because today those fashion shows like Chanel are really stage shows and they're really wonderful and fabulous. They're not about what you're going to wear, really. And so he had all these incredible things that came out on the, on the runways, but that's not what you go in to buy or to get. This is a very exciting time to be creating clothes because never in the history of time there had been a woman as in control of her destiny as a woman today. Everyone has to wear what looks well on them and, and uh, you find somebody that you like and it's just, you know, it's, you have to figure out how, what looks best on you.